Hey YouTube, if you've heard the term API before and you're wondering what it is or have some kind of like basic notion of what that is, uh, look no further. I'm going to give you a quick introduction today to what APIs are, and then we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into some of the different data sources that you can pull information from via an API. What is an API exactly? An API is shorthand for Application Programming Interface. And you can think of this essentially as the language that different services and apps use on the internet to communicate with each other and send data back and forth. Now, if you're somebody that's into uh, trading cryptocurrency or a digital marketer that wants to analyze keywords or look up SEO and different things like that, um, APIs are useful for you. But if you don't have a developer background, it might be a little bit intimidating trying to figure out how to use these different uh, data sources. So basically when a human or a user is using some kind of app or website and they wanna get access or to some data, for example, in this case, a burrito, right? The API will essentially convert that human language into application understandable language here. So he takes this and kind of abbreviates it, right? Um, and this is essentially what the API is doing. So an API uh, looks a lot like a website, um, but the information that it returns is we could consider raw data. So let's go ahead and head to CoinGecko for an example. Um, on CoinGecko's website, we can access the raw data that's being piped up here to the main homepage by going here to resources and clicking on crypto API. Once inside here, if we scroll down, we can see uh, the CoinGecko API version three. And when we open this part of the documentation, we can see there's some, a little bit technical looking documentation. Um, but basically, let's just say, for example, we want to get a list of all of the coins that are on CoinGecko. We can go here to the endpoint coins slash markets. And when we open this, uh, we can actually try this out ourselves. So the only thing that we're required to add here is US dollar. So we're gonna be asking CoinGecko, uh, what is the price of all of your coins with respect to US dollar? Now, when we scroll here to the bottom and hit execute, so if we grab this URL that's here in the documentation, we can paste that in a new tab to kind of look and see what that raw data looks like. And if you're like me, um, this is very hard to read. Um, so how can we get this uh, probably useful data into something that's more uh, human friendly, right? We can see like, oh, there's something about the total volume. There's some market cap rank for something, right? What even is this, right? Neo, ah, here we go. So we can kind of track it out, but this, again, this is hard to read. So how do we get this into something human readable? I'm going to introduce you now to a tool known as API Connector, which can take this kind of data and parse it into Google Sheets for you with no need to code. You simply copy the URL over, put in any query parameters that are necessary, and boom, your data is in a flat, nice tabular format. So if we head over to mixedanalytics.com, we can access this extension by going here and installing from the Google Workspace Marketplace. I already have a copy, so once you have a copy, head over to Google Sheets, and you can access the add-on by clicking here on add-ons, going to API connector, and then pressing open. Now to get this data in the flat format of Google Sheets, what we'll do is head back over to the documentation, and then we'll, we'll grab just this URL here, the HTTPS, that's here in quotes. We'll copy that, and then we'll paste it over here in the API URL path here in the sidebar. Um, we don't need to set up anything else other than the destination sheet. So we'll just set current, and then we'll give this a name that's consistent with what we're doing, which we're getting exchange rates. And then when we save and run this request, uh, we will get the data pulled back into a nice uh, flat tabular format, just like this. So we can see that we have IDs, symbols, name, we have the image of that particular asset linked here as well. So this is fantastic, right? Um, and even if you're not a, <clears throat> This makes the data really easy to see. And I, as a developer, also use this tool a lot because I find it very useful when I'm wanting to look at data from a particular domain or service, and I just wanna get a quick look, and I don't want to sit around and code up a solution in Python or JavaScript that can pull this data into a human viewable format. 
um, it's great. It just makes it a lot easier for development purposes. And again, for people that aren't developers, this is useful if you want to get a look at data that you normally would have to go through some other service or route to get access to. Now, if you're less of a crypto person and more of somebody that's into doing, say, digital marketing on Instagram, I'll show you something that might be relevant for you. If we head over to Rapid API, which we can just Google search and then head into the website here, um, Rapid API is a huge API marketplace that has thousands of APIs, as they say here on the front page. Um, and in particular, let's pull up um, a API known as Hashtaggy. Yep. So Hashtaggy is able to generate hashtags based on a keyword. Um, so if we click here on get related hashtags Instagram, uh, let's go ahead and set up our request over an API connector and pull this into sheets. To start, what we can do is we can create a new sheet and we'll just call this maybe something like keywords, for example, right? Um, and then I've already opened a new request, um, but I'll do it again just to show you. So we go to add new and then under now that we've got our new request open, we'll want to go here to copy this URL. So we'll see it has the request here and then we can paste that in like this. And then we'll want to add um, our query parameters. So we can do that by starting with a question mark and then we will add uh, keyword equals travel here. And then the only other thing we'll need to include is these uh, headers here and there's a special spot inside the API connector sidebar for that so we can paste in that key there and then copy our API key please don't share this with other people consider this kind of like your password um, and keep it safe and then we can also grab that X rapid API host as another header and then grab the domain that we're pulling from and then when we paste in that value We'll set current as our destination sheet, and then we'll keep the naming consistent. So we're gonna look for keywords, save, and then run the request. And then shortly we should see the sheet populate with a list of keywords that are related to travel. So we can see nature lovers, photo of the day. Um, we have even like a relevance score that tells us like how similar it is. So yeah, um, that's, pretty much it for the digital content stuff. All right, and lastly, there might be situations where you wanna scrape data from a given service uh, that you're unable to find an API for. So let's say, for example, you're a computer geek like me and you're using the website LeetCode, for example. Um, LeetCode doesn't have a publicly accessible API, at least uh, readily available on their front page, right? We don't see anything about an API here, even searching API, nothing comes up. So let's say, for example, that I am inside of LeetCode and I'm wanting to get data on all of these problems that I see here, right? I wanna see the acceptance rate and the difficulty and so on and so forth, right? How do I get this data over into Google Sheets? You can use Control-Shift-I to inspect inside the website. And here at the top, you'll want to navigate over to Network and then refresh the page. And shortly you should see a couple of endpoints pop up here. Um, just based on experience, I'm going to guess that the data is contained inside all. And if we head over here to headers, we can see the request URL is HTTP leak code API problems all. So I'm guessing that's probably it. So we can go ahead and copy that request URL, head back to Google Sheets, open a new sheet, and we'll just call it something like leak code problems. And then we'll wanna go ahead and make a new request. And we should be able to paste this URL path in directly and I'm assuming it's public. So we can set the current destination sheet and then we'll say leak code problems and save and give it a run. And shortly we should see Google Sheets populate with the data from leak codes problem set. Hmm. Or maybe not, Let's see how long it takes. Maybe it's going to take a while. Oh, and there it is. Um, so there's the data for all of the problems inside LeetCode. We can see the total actions, total submitted. We can see the question ID. Um, yeah, we can see the relative difficulty level. Uh, so that's pretty much it. 
So for those of you that are new to APIs and understanding it, now you have kind of a basic idea of what's happening behind the scenes. Um, and there's a lot more to it. There's different kinds of requests. We were only focusing on Git requests, which are the most common, but you can also post and put, which we will talk about in future videos. Um, if you have any feedback for me or have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below or reach out to us on a Reddit account to take a look at some of the different projects people are working on or get help on any issues you're having uh, using this add-on. Thanks. Have a good one.